Welcome. My name is Daryl Labar, and in this video I wanted to talk about how to create lots of option sets very, very quickly. Uh, I was given a uh, request to go through and create an option set for credit card expiration years. Uh, this is could be a lot of years. Uh, you don't really want to add a lot in the future. Uh, if you can help it, say you want to create them all as many as you can uh, right now, we also need to look up some previous uh, payment records as well. And therefore, we need some older years as well. So I need a, a large number of option sets for this. And you can go through and do this through the UI, and it's kind of you know fun. So I want to create a new one here. And I'm making the value the same as the actual year, so that way I can do a lot more logic with it and import it and export it easier with other systems. And each time I do that, it brings up this error message. Yes, I want to use this. I have to click OK. And then finally I get to create another, I have to make sure I, I name this correctly and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And each time I do that, it takes uh, a, a few a few seconds to do that once. So if I have to do that for a hundred of them, that's that's a long time. So um, I'm going to show you how to actually go through and create that in mm, about two minutes, hopefully, uh, rather than you know, the 20 or potentially hour. And you can apply this to any sort of uh, general large number of option sets you want to create. And hopefully it's uh, something that you can use uh, for something that's not necessarily specifically for this, but I'll, I'll we'll just walk you through the steps that I've done. So the first thing I've done is I've created my global option set here that I want to use, and I've just given it the initial value. And it's just, it's just important to get a nice format, so that way I know what I need to change when I add a new value here. So for this example, I'm actually going to uh, make the first year 2000. That's going to be the oldest one that we're going to go back to. Yes, got it there. I'm going to save that. Alright, the save finally went through, now I'm publishing it. Alright, then went through. And I've created a single solution, so create a solution with just your single option set in it, just to make it easier to, to do that. And then go ahead and export it. So you can walk through the export the solution. We already published, don't need to worry about that. Next, 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 and export that. So I've already exported that. It's my downloads folder here. And I create your zip file, and I've gone through and just said extract all, and I put it in my actual, uh, just in that same folder, it doesn't matter. So then I've got the extracted. And here you'll see a customization is the XML. Now I have a program called Notepad++ to edit XML. You can use just standard Notepad, or any other editing tool that will edit text, uh, but I recommend Notepad++ if you don't use it. It's uh, a free a free program and it's very, very helpful. So I'm going to go through and edit it. When I open it up, <clears throat> this is what we actually see. You see in here, we have our option set defined here. And then we've got our actual options here. And this is the part we want. All we have to do is take this, and copy and paste it, save that, rezip the file, the folder, and then import it, and that'll create a new value. Obviously, this is going to create an error because our values are exactly the same, and that's not valid. So I'm going to go ahead and update this to 2000. It was an older, an older number. All right, so now I have my my actual value I want to start with. So I could go through here and say, okay, okay, this is 2001, this is 2001, and and save, and and that would work. But if I wanted to do that 75 times, that's that's no fun either, right? So um, what I'm using in this case is a program called LinkPad, and it's a, a free download. You can pay for it as well, and you get some IntelliSense. So. But in here, I've actually taken that option set text here. So I've copied the part that I just pasted in here. I basically just copied in here. And I'll go through the steps I did here. Um, actually, we'll, go, we'll start from scratch. So I did new, and I chose program rather than expression. In here, I did a var format equals, and then I use the at sign here. The reason you do that, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, but that allows you to get multi line multi-line uh, strings in C-sharp. So here it went through and the paste gave us spaces. I don't want the spaces, so I'm going to control Z to undo that. And also it's giving all these errors. And the reason that is is because this double quote is ending our, our uh, string. So I'm going to replace this single quote with the double quote. And make sure it's in selection, replace all. Okay. So now everything looks good. I'm going to remove these extra lines here just to clean that up a little bit. Okay. And now I just need to go through and, and increment my, my loop here. Oh, I also need to change this to to use this curly brace, zero curly brace. 
And that just means that's a placeholder for what I want to input into it when I format it. So I'm going to go through and write my loop here. Uh, we'll go to 2075. Uh, Alright. So if you're not familiar with the syntax, it just says, this is my counter, call it an I just for convention. I'm going to start at a 2000, and I'm going to go until it's less than 2075, and this is plus plus, this means increment by one. So then we get it through, and we do string.format, and I give it the format, we just typed in, and then I give it the variable I want to use to replace. So in this case, I'm replacing that right there. Go ahead and run it. Oh, and then I also need to spit that out. This is called dump. Okay. And I've got all these options already created for me. Go through, and I can delete my option I already had, and paste in what I got. Okay. So right now, if you look at this, these, um, this option here isn't quite lined up correctly, so let's just fix that. Not that it matters. It's more of an OCD thing. There's a tool in, uh, in Notepad++. Control-Shift-Alt-B will auto-format your XML for you. Not that it matters, but all right. So that's nicely formatted. Didn't have to be just OCD issue, but in here we've actually got each option, 2007, label, description. If you want to put a description, then you can as well. And basically, you just need a way of actually creating, if you're going to do this for something else, a way of creating those option uh, option nodes here. With a label, if you have a label, if you have multiple languages, you need to go through and handle that as well. Right now, I'm only concerned about English. And uh, the description, if you have a description. So now I save that. I go back into my temp file here. So that's been saved. Great. Right click mom and just say send to compressed folder. And name of it doesn't matter as much. I'm just gonna right shift right click to say copy as path. Go back into my version of uh, Dynamics 365. And we're gonna import and choose the file and paste it when I copy. Next, import. Okay, everything imported successfully. Publish that. And that's done. Save that. Now, if I go and open up my option set here, you see we have all the years listed here, and each one has. Uh, which has our value and label as we should want it. So that's it. So hopefully they found that helpful. And again, uh, you don't have to use LinkPad if you don't want to. Uh, but anything you want to use to, to generate those, you can you can do that. Uh, you can copy paste and you can hand edit it. Whatever you want to do um, in order to generate those. So if you generate, if you need to generate ten, it might be better just to copy paste and, and edit the value and edit your description, uh, your label, and then your actual description. So uh, it's up to you. But that's a uh, uh, just real quick, simple way how to do that, and um, works for both global or local option sets. Um, just to make sure you export that, and then go find where it is in the actual XML to actually import that. And that's it. Hopefully you found that helpful, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments.